Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste in Music, and today we are going to take a look at some of the best album openers. Now, when I ask for best album openers, I am looking very specifically not for good songs that start off an album, but rather songs that get me interested in the project itself. Now, I'm not sure how many of these requests are going to just be, oh, I like this song, it makes me want to continue listening, or how many of these are going to be, oh, this is really setting off this album on a good foot, and is really going to get the ball rolling. By the time this video is out, there's going to be a a new prompt out so keep an eye for that in the community tab make sure you check out the streams on saturday and tuesday at 2 p.m cst where you are able to pay me and send in music and i will react to it rate it talk about it and the chat will also do the same it's great there's a huge community you can discover new music if you show up and yeah uh, without further ado let's get immediately started <laughs> Tunnels by Arcade Fire is both their best song and a fantastic opener, perfectly sets the mood of the record. I do believe I've heard this song, and if it is what I remember it is, I think I do agree. I mean, if we're just talking about the first five seconds here, it already starts off sounding like uh, fading into a winter day, which I think is gorgeous. <laughs> What's nice about this song is it feels like it's dramatic, but it also starts very quickly, immediately getting you into the action. So if I was interested in listening to this album, it wouldn't feel like I'd have to wait long to get into something uh, very exciting. So it would feel like it would grab me immediately. <laughs> Anyways, I've heard this song before and I think it's important to note that the beginning of this song is kind of exactly what I'm looking for, setting a really unique tone uh, as it sounds like winter and it's a really beautiful chimey atmosphere. Also from the fact that it's neighborhood number one and it's followed by neighborhood number two. If you like neighborhood number one, okay, you're already going to want to listen to neighborhood number two. I think this is a fantastic example, okay, guy with, uh, with verified profile, um, not just, you know, voted up because he's verified. Angel off a of Massive Attack's Mezzanine really sets off this album's mysterious nocturnal vibe. Everything about this track is crafted with laser precision. The production is spectacular and it really gets you hooked on with to this project sound. So this album is a trip hop album. I believe a 90s trip hop album. Yeah, 1998, late 90s. Um, this is a fantastic project. I started doing a reaction to this thing and then I lost the footage. So if you guys want me to do that all over again, I will because it's been long enough. I barely remember anything about this project. First track, Angel. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, immediately, it's like that last album where uh, there's there's a fading in of something really interesting. That really dark, mysterious bass tone gets me like, okay, yeah, let's get this shit started. Disgusting. Like, it's so thin, but yet there's something about it that feels like it's crawling you know, through your skin. Terrifying, it is perfect. It's it's showing you that it has some restraint and there's some artistic integrity going on here, you know? I mean, this shit is good. It really gets me started off on this project on a good foot. I also like how patient this song is. As you'll hear, the bass all of a sudden starts to become fuzzier and it starts to sound more like a guitar and the whole thing just starts to unfold and become a larger experience. Oh my God, it's so good. That's the other thing, even in a moment like this where the instrumental explodes, if you take a close listen, the bass is still subtle. It's a track that knows that it doesn't need to pile everything onto you at once to make you really feel something. And I like the fact that it takes its time with specific things and other things just kind of strike you and hit you. It's this balance between something that's crawling and something that's like, boom, like out of the shadows. And then it crawls back in the shadows. I definitely forgot how amazing that track is. Um, it's so dark. The textures that change, the pacing, it all feels so artistic. It's exciting. It shows you the potential of what this album can do with just a small little piece 
with a couple of small little pieces. I feel like this is a perfect introduction to this project. It says, this is what we are able to present to you. Here's an amazing song, and it makes me want to continue to see what else they have to offer around the corner. Yeah, pretty fantastic uh, opening track here. Igor's theme by Tyler the Creator, it immediately hooks the listener in with the drone of the synth. The drums come in at the perfect time in an explosion of sound. Not only is it the perfect mood setter for the rest of the album, it brings the most amount of anticipation on its own. It's an amazing track. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Igor. Um, I think the album is just not my thing. I know, I know, I know. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel listening to Igor's theme, so I think this is gonna be an inter uh, interesting one to revisit. Hey, no booing. Okay, no booing, no cancellation. It's really not that hard to just press down a key and have it play out like this. I don't know, I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's not really that impressive. Okay, from a technical standpoint, there's a lot of shit going on, okay? The bass, it's going boom, boom, all over the place. The drums sound really nice, they're really crisp. Singing on this song and a lot of points in this album just aren't that good. They're not engaging, and overall this song feels kind of boring to me. Honestly, nah. I'd, I, if I heard this, I'd be like, eh. Hey, 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 I'm just saying, okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Also, this song has fucking nothing to do with the album. I mean, I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just speaking facts here. Like, Igor's theme is like riding around, you, they go feel this one. Is it trying to say that if I keep listening to Igor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, feel this one? I don't know. It's, it's a weird intro. I don't think it works. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this one. So I think that imagining the character that uh, Tyler's playing throughout this album actually kind of helps a little bit with this, as it is kind of a strange character and it is a bit of a strange opening. It definitely has its moments, though I'm still overall not super in love with this project. I can kind of see where you're coming from, but for me, it's still eh. It's eh. It's eh. All right, that's it. Introvert by Little Sims is such a good opener thematically and musically. It sets a grandiose tone while introducing most of the lyrical themes. The album will explore wonderful take here, absolutely. This is a song uh, basically addressing everything that's going to happen throughout the project. It is one of the best album openers I've personally ever heard. One of the best uh, rap songs I've ever heard and absolutely stunning. A stunning, stunning, stunning track. Introvert is insane. I mean, literally, the way it starts off is crazy. There's so many moments in this track where it just unfolds and like she has like incredible incredible lines that feel so personal along with like an orchestral background to kind of push them into an even uh, more intense spotlight. I mean, it starts with fucking horns, okay? I mean, come on. It's, it literally starts with horns and bum bum. By the way, go watch my uh, reaction to this album. My reaction to the entire thing. Uh... Now this is how you make a cohesive track, okay? Let's let's shit on Igor's theme for a little bit, okay? Uh, basic, simple, analog synthesizer put together with a lot of goofy, random shit uh, that all just doesn't really mean all that much. Uh, coming together with a pretty decent outro there, uh, admittingly, it's it's fine, but introvert, okay, it starts off, it's simple. It's, it's an orchestral intro that is just mm, luscious, full to the brim, all of a sudden turning into this wonderful, rap beat that sounds like uh, like the stars are falling around it. Hey, hey, no booing. Hey, no booing. Okay, I'm just speaking facts, okay? And the blood of a young messiah. I see sinners in a church. I see sinners in a church. Devils alive. Fulfill your wildest desires. Then I see a soul rising as a body gets closer to death. So yeah, Introvert is probably the most grand possible way of starting off a project, a hip-hop project. Yeah, uh, about as perfect as you can get for an album intro in my opinion. I love this track, I think it's a wonderful way to start off this project, and then it leads into an also pretty freaking amazing project. Uh, yeah, good example. <laughs> 
Bomb track on Rage Against the Machine. Perfect way to set the audience's expectations. It's loud, it's in your face, it's catchy as hell, and it's the first Rage Against the Machine uh, song on the first Rage Against the Machine project. It surely made a lasting impression. Also, that bass line at the beginning is a great intro for the entire project. Now, the only reason I would think that this might not be the best album intro in the world is the fact that I think that Rage Against the Machine pretty much makes the exact same songs over and over and over again, which is definitely not Nissel. I love Rage Against the Machine. I love basically every single Rage Against the Machine song, but um, there's just something about this uh, bomb track that I don't think really stands out a whole lot from other songs on this project. It's a good song, but it's not the most original. That being said, this bass line is a pretty good way to start it off. says it's just another bomb track like it's just another hit from Rage Against the Machine. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. It's There's something about that alone that makes me think, eh. Look, again, I love this project. I love this album so much, but if we're talking about specifically album openers, I think, I think that while it does start very strong, the song itself doesn't really fit in what I'd expect uh, for an album opener. It's just another bomb track. You know what, I actually kind of agree now. I think that the sound of this sounds wonderful. It, it, it literally sounds like busting out onto the stage. Like, boom, doors kick down, we're here, boom, 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 boom. There's something very specific about this riff that actually does kind of sound like an intro now that I think about it. Um, yeah, I kind of retract my statements from, from earlier. I think this actually does work pretty well. <laughs> So yeah, I actually agree. I think Bomb Track is actually a fantastic opener. I completely retract my statement. I think that it does sound like an opener. It sounds sonically like it's starting off this project and getting you in the very energetic mood for this thing. I would also argue, though, that I think that um, Freedom, the final track on this project, is one of the best album closers out there, too. Which I pretty much will do, uh, inevitably. Uh, best album closers, I think Freedom's up there. Prison Song by System of a Down, the infectious riff is a great hook in despite how packed in all the ideas are, it never gets overbearing, it's also a great tone setter for the album. What I also like about this track is I believe it starts off and it immediately just throws a huge riff and note at you and then has a large break before uh, moving forward. I think that's a really interesting way to almost jump scare the listener into the project, saying boom you're gonna have a lot of adrenaline. Tina says jumpsuit best album opener. <laughs> Just kidding, it's pretty good. That being said, it probably will show up here. I mean, my God. Chael. Home. Oh, and the way it just, mm, just leaves you out like that. Prison Song is a fantastic song, and I like how abrupt it is. I like how explosive it is, because it pretty much says, hey, look, this album's going to give you a lot of really uh, insane shit. I think the fact that it doesn't hold back at all with this song, with the craziness, also just shows that, yeah, the quality of this isn't just like, you know, we're not going to ease you into this. We're, we're going to give you the best shit from the very start. Yeah, I love this album so much, and I agree. I think that uh, I think Prison Song is a wonderful start. That being said, eh, I do think Machine Gun Kelly would have done this song a little bit better, but that's just my opinion. Uh, you guys can uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> then Bones by Alice in Chains. You immediately get attacked on the sonic front from a self-loathing and quite powerful song, and the album Dirt continues the energy Them Bones has up to until the last notes of wood. It's a fantastic opener and one of Alice in Chains' best songs. Now, we're finally getting to something I actually haven't heard yet, so I'm curious to see this. Here we go. Yeah, this is a project I haven't actually heard, so I'm kind of curious to hear it. All right, Them Bones. <laughs> It. Much like the last song we just listened to, it's a very explosive start. It says you're going to get something very large, you're going to get something very loud, you don't have to wait for it. Yeah. 
So I'm not super familiar. Ooh, look at that. So I'm not super familiar with this project, though I will say, seeing that there are a lot of uh, longer tracks here, I like the fact that it starts off with a flash and a pan. Every single moment of that track is really solid. The singing is great. I feel like the riff is incredible, and it doesn't waste any time on getting exciting. Um, yeah, I think that this is a wonderful album opener. I mean, I don't know really anything about this project, but that makes me want to know something about this project. It makes me think, huh, I wonder if the rest of it is that high quality. And just hearing the beginning of this next track, hearing how great that riff is, I'm like, okay, so it continues to get exciting. So, yeah, I think this is a great example. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Bradley from the future here to do a segment on the song uh, Jumpsuit by 21 Pilots. Now, this is a wonderful track, a great opener, very explosive. Hits you directly in the face, uh, and it's honestly one of the best songs 21 Pilots has ever made. Do I want to listen to it, though? Hell no, I don't want to listen to that right now. Are you fucking kidding me? It's 21 Pilots. Okay. Next. Cygnus Vigman Cygnus by the Mars Volta from Francis Francis the Mute. Ah! Francis the Mute, hands down, a legendary song front to back, almost cinematic in the end. Uh, the chaotic blend of Latin jazz and prog rock makes it bombastic and 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 it and an energetic opening. Starts off pretty quiet. I guess that's why they call him Francis the Mute and not Francis the Loud. Am I right? <laughs> I'm gonna assume it gets a little bit louder. Oh shit. Oh, that is... That is some funky shit. Holy crap. Imagine if I would've turned up the volume, I would've been like, ah! Which I think is the point of this, to, to say, oh, Francis is a little mute, let me turn this up. And then, boom! I mean, god damn, that is a, that is a funky ass track. Oh my god. Oh my god. Feels like a blend of talking heads right here. Starting off extremely quiet is a bit of a non starter for me. I will say that uh, I think many other tracks on this list have started immediately, initially out the gate stronger. Um, though as soon as that instrumental pops in, I feel like everything so far that I've been shown has just sounded amazing. <laughs> Holy shit! I will admit I'm not as blown away by this as uh, some of the other tracks that I've been sent in, and I think it's because maybe it's the, the prog style of this song that's kind of losing me a little bit. Though I will say that the moments here that, are, that, that feel explosive, that really grab my attention, are uh, the things that really um, pull me into this track. Like, I really loved the jazzy, funky beat in the beginning, though I will say this song has kind of dragged and become a little less interesting as it's went along. Um, I feel like as a juxtaposition to the last track, this one is a very long album opener that pretty much drags you in the very beginning and kind of says, all right, we're going on this journey together, which is cool, but for me personally, I'm not like as, as blown away by this as I was with uh, like System of a Down or some other stuff. It's pretty good, but eh, decent, decent uh, example. Someone made a mention of um, XXX Tentacion, and I want to say that um, if I had to make a pick for my favorite album opener of all time, okay, it would be... To find... To find the exact words. That's right. Introduction, him just talking about how what you're about to hear is really deep and how you need to really open your mind. To find the exact words. To find the perfect words. Less aggressive way, but a more passive and genius way was I do with this album. Acquire a large amount of passion and love. And if you don't listen to the alternative sound and open your mind before you listen to this album. <sighs> Look, I'm not going to get into X right now, okay? But let's just say that this is... This, this... Mm -mm. Nope. Maybe it's the sound. 
To the Blade, Everything Everything, Get to Heaven is an album with, with such a unique sound and yet a lot of people raise eyebrows to it. For me, I think it the, that the opener is the perfect tone setter for this record. It starts off pretty timid, but this track really lets itself go crazy seemingly out of nowhere. Jonathan Higgs does not hold back when it comes to his nasally falsetto and the guitar riffs are absolutely insane, one of my favorite openers. Now I think that a lot of the deep cuts on this project have kind of shrunk on me as I think that there are specific huge highlights on this project. Um, and, and a couple of other songs that just kind of fall a little bit flat, but I absolutely think that the opener of this is an explosive, wonderful start to this project. I mean, you could actually see the hearts that I've given on this. I mean, I've hearted about four songs here, um, but yeah, the opener is one of them. So you think there's no meaning in anything that we do, and you call them a piece so dirt. NF type lyrics? What? Never can you take it back. Arena, where you Man, I see you talking shit over there in the chat like you know shit, okay? Bullshit! Anybody guys get the cameras all right these guys looking like they just you know accidentally opened up the cookie jar and out popped someone taking a picture of them right now okay they're like whoa what the fuck was that all right that's that was all right get the cameras out Anyways, I think this song is really beautiful. I like the intro. I think it, it doesn't drag on for me because the payoff is there. I expect it, and it's wonderful. I also know that as the song continues, it's very dynamic, and when it does go back to this payoff, it does it differently. Wonderful opener, and I think this is a good example. Yeah, pretty good. Running Up That Hill, A Deal With God by Kate Bush. Not only does it set up the mood for the first half of this album, but the haunting beauty of the synth strings and the airy nature of the production mixed with Bush's delivery makes it stand out as one of the greatest openers. Is this off of what I think it is? Hounds of Love? Now, I listened to this album a while ago. I didn't get it, but I've listened to more stuff from Kate Bush like throughout her discography, and I feel like uh, returning to it eh, is probably a good idea. But anyways, let's give it a shot. Running Up That Hill. Whimsical start immediately. I like the uh, synth that starts off starting a really solid texture. The drums don't take too long. They come in, they sound really nice. This extra synth coming in sounds really great. Already liking the way that this is set up. It's quite a good song. As I predicted, listening to more Kate Bush has actually made me understand her sound a little bit better. But I think that's the biggest barrier between me and this song was kind of just getting used to the sound. It's very 80s. It came out in the 80s. But holy shit, I mean, for the 80s, I mean, this thing is very experimental. Um, the surprising bursts of sound worked for me uh, and worked for the track extremely well, but oh my god, that song was catchy. That song was insanely catchy, and the writing was absolutely spectacular and very memorable. I mean, that is just... Yeah, I see it. If the whole thing is that catchy and that majestic, that large, that strange, then this is definitely worth the revisit. Damn. That was pretty amazing. All right. Hey, you got me. You got me. Uh, you got my attention with that one. All right. <laughs> Untitled by Interpol, by far their best album, but this is a really underrated track that sets up the beautiful melancholy atmosphere for the rest of the album. Such a chilling and wonderful opener. I don't really remember this song, if I'm being honest. I mean, immediately it sounds like bright lights being turned on, so... Yeah, I think with how obtuse and obscure the actual bass line is here, how it comes in and sounds really messed up is in a super uh, intriguing detail following a pretty sweet standard kind of textured guitar lick. Um, yeah, the, the combination here is pretty interesting. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I actually 
kind of disagree with this one. I, I think that it does everything that a good album opener would do. But because I know this album and I know how good the next track is, I feel like this one's kind of outclassed by it. Um, Obstacle 1 is like the only Interpol song I return to. I mean, I liked this project when I listened to it and, and kind of dissected it. But if we're talking about like album openers, I would probably skip this every time just to get to Obstacle 1 and then probably start listening to the album from there. This, uh, this song does just kind of drag and I'm not actually super in love with this coming back to it. I mean, listening to Obstacle 1, this song is just incredible. Yeah, no, I think that if this started the album, that would be a much more engaging start. I don't think Untitled really does Obstacle 1 any justice. What's up? It's Nighttime Future Bradley. I don't actually fully agree with this opinion coming back to this. I think this song actually is really solid. Um, what I will say is I think that it's not a great album opener because it just doesn't transition all that well into the next track. And I feel like um, it sets up the tone, but it kind of feels like the tone is a bit off uh, for the rest of the album. Like, it, it, Untitled doesn't feel, for me personally, like it matches a lot of the different ideas, uh, especially on the second half of the album. I don't know, there was always something a little bit off with the tone of this project, though the songs are really strong. You think I ain't worth a dollar, but I feel like a millionaire. The song from, uh, Songs from the Death by Queens of the Stone Age, it starts quietly, establishes the whole this is a road trip through the desert motif of the album, and then, when you least expect it, it explodes into an absolute shockwave of vocals that will probably scare the shit out of a first-time listener. It keeps this energy throughout the whole song with loud, crazy vocals and an unforgettably evil riff. Yes! I agree. This is a fantastic opener. I actually like how it starts off sounding kind of like a skit, uh, and the way that it mm, bursts into a song. Uh, I, I also have a full reaction, first of all, to this album and the one we're about to listen to. What's the saga? It's songs for the deaf. This would scare away 84 Chargers. It's definitely not car commercial music. So yeah, this, uh, this song really kicks down the door and gets you started. And yeah, some people are saying it sounds like a car commercial, but not really. Let me show you a song that actually sounds like a car commercial, funny enough. Uh, it's People of the Pride off of Coldplay's new record. This, now this, is Ford Charger type beat. I was going to type in Ford Charger. I forgot that it's People of the Pride. People on the left, people on the right, people of the pride. New Ford Charger, ladies and gentlemen. A new Ford Charger. It's trucked over, baby. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's car commercial shit. Yeah, good example. Really like that uh, opener right here. Hey, we got King of Carrot Flowers Part 1. So I've been meaning to actually revisit this project, funny enough. This song sets the mood for such a whimsical and interesting album, though it starts with a mellow, folky guitar. It's also part one for the song that goes, uh, I Love You, Jesus Christ. That is technically part two, but still. Uh, regardless, I do agree. I think that this is a very beautiful album opener. <laughs> Now, King and Carrot Flowers Part 2 and 3 are technically part of the intro. That being said, it's not really the starting track. They're kind of just like a continuation. And I want to make a point, as uh, I feel like also with the Alan Sit and Chains song that we heard uh, earlier, this is one of those very simple flash in a pan type of songs that gives you, uh, honestly, a really sweet tune in the very beginning of this project to kind of sink you into the mood. And I also think that the more you listen to it, the more you realize how memorable pretty much every single line on this song is. And that's also one of the reasons this project is so good, is because it's a folk album that's ridiculously memorable. I mean, it is catchy, it sounds sweet, the production is stunning, the sound is great, and my god, these lyrics are just get stuck in your head for forever. So this is one of those ones where I feel like it, it might not initially hit you as to what it is about this that's super special, but there's something very comforting um, knowing this project, coming back to it, and, and kind of the familiarity of the strangeness of it that I feel like makes it work really well as an album opener. 
Lamp uh, with Yumi. This album's absolutely incredible, and the first song, Symphony, is one of the best openers of all time for me. This song feels like an opening of an incredible book for the first time, and all the emotions and feelings flowing into you. The synth at the start is complex, and it's so nice to listen to. The rest of the song builds up on this, and it feels really comfy and romantic, with the vocals being really neat. Now, I don't know what this is. I wonder if it's one of those albums with, uh, with a weird, inappropriate album cover, so I'm just going to cover it quick. Doesn't seem to be that way. I'm trying to find this song. I mean, it's not, but I can't really find which 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 song this is. Is it this one? It looks like it's this one. No, but it's got to be the opener, right? I mean, this is the album, right? Or is it not? I don't know. I just don't know. What is this? Oh, it's this album. It does have boobs on it, but they're really low quality boobs. I'm not trying to insult them. I'm just saying it's probably not the most inappropriate thing in the world. All right. So it, does, it's, it is an album with the titties. I'll just uh, sit right here perfectly in the way of them titties. All right. Let's hear the opener. Sounds like a G-Funk synthesizer, straight up. All right, yeah, like it. It's pretty good, a very explosive start. Hey, I'm gonna have to subset, uh, subtract some points because it's in Japanese, which, I mean, I shouldn't have to explain that, right? Okay. Racial, not racist. Yeah, it does sound very sweet, though I will say I'm bored of it by now. I mean, it's a seven minute song and it's already kind of lost my attention. It started off very grand, and I do agree. I do like how it started, though, at this point, I don't know. Okay, this composition right now is pretty incredible. I do actually kind of feel the magic. I take back what I said earlier. I actually love the sound of this. It's really cozy. Like you said, it's extremely cozy. I think the production's incredible. I think it gives constant changing textures, and I find the singing to be absolutely gorgeous and fun to lock onto as every single syllable feels like it's guiding me along. Um, yeah, actually a pretty great opener. Yeah, makes me want to listen to more. Good suggestion. All right. He with money in his hand. He offered me. I didn't ask him. I wasn't Beware by Death Grips. Uh, Ex-Military. What a magnificent way to open up a discography. I mean, at the time it was just an album. But anyway, setting the tone so the listener instantly knows that we are dealing with some uh, something that they have never heard before. 10 out of 10. It starts off with a Charles Manson interview and then the song comes in and it kicks and it's just an insane track. What's up you guys? It's Bradley here. So, bad news. My computer just did that thing where it randomly crashes and everything gets corrupted. Which fucking sucks. But luckily I was live. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to uh, record everything behind me. Go off into his and go to work for. Work for what? Money? I got all the money in the world. I deal with cars. So I'm not going to listen to the entire six minute track of here, as it is kind of a difficult listen. Uh, but I mean, that's part of also the appeal and why I love this project so much. It's challenging. This first song being so long is uh, is kind of to say, hey, anybody who's listening to this, if you can't handle this first track, you're not going to be able to handle the second track, which is a significantly uh, more intense uh, listen than even this first one. I Want to Be Adored of the Stone Roses debut record, self-titled, is an unbelievable song. This song has a thumping bass line and overbearing sense of moodiness throughout and a calm build-up throughout the entire track to build a beautiful, culminated climax. It's one of my favorite albums of all time, being by far some of the best stuff to come out of the baggy Manchester scene. Okay, here we go. So, I have not heard this project since I heard it like five years ago, which is just crazy to say. So, here we go. Let's give it a shot. I like the ambience starting this off. It's very mysterious. 
best boy bruv album of the 80s. Very 80s too with all the reverb. Oh, I want to be a door. I get it. Uh, I see. Even if this song was called I Want to Be a Door, it would still still work. I mean, that's, that's some, I, I don't know, there's something iconic about sometimes mishearing things like that, that makes something like stick in your head more. Um, I also like the way that he screams it out. It feels very passionate. I think this is a pretty solid album opener, though I wouldn't say this is the best example as it's not the most immediate track and it doesn't pull me in to make me think, okay, I need to go check this out right now. It just feels like a solid single to start off this project. The adults are talking, the strokes, something about that first burst of guitars is immediately gratifying. I can re I can remember where I was the first time I heard it. The song is energetic and perfectly showcases the sounds that are present throughout the project. Knew I'd like this album as soon as this started playing. I actually feel a very similar way. I have a very popular, if I do say so myself, popular reaction to this album, where as soon as I heard this song, I was like, oh shit, we are getting something that's really solid, which I think for the strokes, considering they did have a bit of a rocky run uh, previously up to this project was a really good sign for this, so I already think that this is a good example. Something is brilliant. I know you guys can't hear it, but the fact that there's that back and forth that literally sounds like two people communicating with each other is still one of the most like brilliant things. And I feel like while this isn't the most engaging track to get me into the album, as soon as that shit starts happening and you kind of see that like, oh my god, like that kind of detail is in here, that's that's where I think this album all of a sudden starts to like be like, alright, I see there's some there's some shit under the covers here. You think this song's kind of mid? I think this is a good song, but I think that it's not the best of openers because, to be honest with you, coming back to this album, hearing this song, I don't really want to, first of all, continue listening for the five minutes. It's a nice listen, but it's outclassed. The problem is, is I want to, personally, immediately skip over to At The Door. I would skip these four songs right here just to get to At The Door and then Ode To The Mets. I think those two songs kind of outclass everything else on this project. So it's just one of those weird situations where while I do think it's a good album, it's just not something I really return to for the full experience rather than the really brilliant bright spots here. Nine Inch Nails, Mr. Soft Destruct. All these things are just Again, okay, albums I've heard recently. The song perfectly uh, encompasses the sound of the downward spiral through its chaotic drumming and its terrifying blasting guitars. The lyrics combined with the instrumental show the listener that they're about to witness a character spiral down into madness and suicide. Also, the guitar solo at the end is one of the greatest moments in Nine Inch Nails' uh, discography. Starts off with some gachi. Denial number four. Fuck you, Ash. Oh yeah, and then this is how it ends. So yeah, it ends with a uh, manic spiral. Yeah, this song is pretty much close to perfect. I think that this is an absolutely stunning opener. As it makes me want to immediately listen to this album again after I finish recording. Um, yeah, this is... It's manic. It's it's absolutely incredible. I feel like the production could not be better. Uh, I feel like the screaming, the lyrics could not be better. This is the most intense and like like potent way to start off a project but it also feels very cohesive like it's exactly like they said it's like boom the song starts it's like crawling under your skin it's really disturbing and then the song all of a sudden gets to this quiet part where all of a sudden it's it just feels like it follows how a real attack like this would go it feels unsettlingly real <laughs> Time to Pretend by MGMT is literally the perfect opening for Oracular or, or, uh, Erectum Spectacular. 
A, sp a catchy and sincere song that puts you in the right mood for the album. To be honest, every MGMT opening uh, is a good song. Uh, personally, hey, I, I think that uh, She Works Out Too Much is probably would be my MGMT pick. But then again, I haven't actually heard any other openers for MGMT. So let's go. Oracular Spectacular. Pause. Corgi says, Oracular Spectacular sounds like a Tally Hall album. True. True. It fucking does, dude. It actually does. That's that's what they're gonna come back with. It's gonna be some hocus pocus bullshit. Okay, this song is bright. It's extremely catchy. The synths are fantastic. I was not sure how I'd feel going into this, but I gotta say, it's a hell of an earworm. I'm uh, I'm actually very happy with this track. Oh. Jack's really freaking good, dude. I'm sold. Saying something is overplayed is such a cop-out excuse. It's never had any impact on a song for me. Like, if I enjoy something and it gets big, I'd be happy to hear it played a lot in public. I hate to say that I'm a little guilty of the whole, like, overplayed thing in some cases, though I, I'm not as, like, heavy on it as some other people. Because I agree, it's, like, overplayed. You know, if the song's good, then it should have value no matter what but there is something to be said that if you are say listening to the radio a lot and or or just like out in public and you hear a song a lot of times i think it's valid to dislike something because you constantly hear it all the time it's like you know how else are you supposed to describe how you feel you know like uh, hearing something a bunch of times and and not liking it because of that time to pretend is an absolutely fantastic opener it makes me want to check out project i actually saved it on the library and if you guys want me to react to this let me know because that grabbed my attention i really like the sound of that track and i'd be totally cool to hear that again Myth, Beach House. It's my all-time favorite opener to any album. The atmosphere it instantly brings you in with the reverbed acoustic drums and synths while the guitars slowly build up, not to mention how utilized the stereo field is. All right, Myth is a very popular song. Apparently, people really like this song, and I'm curious to get into more Beach House anyway. So here we go, Myth. Sound is very good. Yeah, the sound of this feels like an intro. Like, it feels like it's starting off some sort of experience. Like, the... It's mysterious. It kind of uh, just sets the tone really nicely and makes them curious just from this little bit how the rest of these songs fit into this. Is Teen Dream the album with money trees in it? Now, I don't have as much of a connection with this song as, I don't know, I don't really see the thing about Myth that stands out from any other songs I've heard from Beach House. I think it's a good track, but I'm not really sure if this would classify as one of my favorite openers, especially after the really strong day of today's openers. It's a good start, but I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't click with me as much. This one has grown on me a bit, and I don't necessarily stand with this opinion as much. Uh, this track is very blissful, and I think it's a fantastic opener. Disorder by Joy Division on the album Unknown Pleasures. While this is one of the more up-tempo songs on the album, it gets you very hyped to listen to the rest of the album. I actually very much agree with this. It has a dark atmosphere around it, and it's just like most of the other tracks on the album. It lets you know that this isn't going to be a normal punk album. It's going to be much more incredible than that. Normal punk albums can be good. I think uh, Disorder and the beginning of Unknown Pleasures, as in enter, entering a void, you have no idea what to expect, and the deeper you go, the light slowly fades away until it's complete darkness. I've been waiting for a guy to take me by the hand is a very fitting first line, as in it takes us through this haunting album as we listen to it. He is right. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I think the sound of this is amazing. I mean, if I was to personally pick out of uh, today's best openers, this would definitely be like top five, maybe top three. Um, this one personally, I feel like is such a strong start that it kind of just convinces you to listen to the rest of the album because of how uh, unbelievably good this first song is. The sound is unbelievable. The performance is unbelievable. Like this track is just phenomenal. <laughs>
Yeah, this also came out though like 79. No, seriously, if this song came out yesterday, like they'd be like, oh wow, this sounds really organic and natural. This shit probably came out yesterday. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I think it just sounds absolutely stunning. Like th this album and specifically this song to me feels really timeless. I think that this is pretty much like a, a perfect track for me. I think this is an incredible opener. I think this is an absolutely stunning example. Um, it does kind of blow up by the end of there, uh, end of the track, and kind of just gets a little more insane as it goes along. Um, but yeah, yeah, regardless. <laughs> Teenage Riot by Sonic Youth perfectly sets up the sound uh, Sonic Youth will continue to explore throughout the album, and it's a great song that stands out on its own. All right. All right, kind of a haunting start here. Okay, it's picking up. This makes the intro feel kind of rewarding. It's shit kind of mid, not going to lie. I don't get it. It's fine. I, I, I'm not seeing uh, what I'm supposed to see here, but you know, I'll continue. Shit, I don't want to sit through the rest of this song, yet alone this entire album, dude. I mean, damn, this is a seven minute song. Does this shit just continue like this throughout the entirety of it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, same shit throughout the entirety of it. Next! <laughs> Alright, fuck this shit. The car is on fire, and there's no driver at the wheel. First movement of the Dead Flag Blues by Godspeed You Black Emperor. As you can see, there's a riot next to me. Uh, just ignore them, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm not sure if this counts as a song, but the opening poem, uh, poem of Dead Flag Blues sets the scene of the album very well. Some of the lyrics in it also hit very hard, especially when accompanied by Godspeed's music in the background. Yes, I agree. This was the album that really got me into Godspeed. I absolutely love the background music. I love how the narration kind of... Uh, sets in that music. I like the drone a lot. Um, yeah, this is a very spooky and mysterious poem that has really stuck with me and I've quoted it in multiple videos uh, saying like, you know, uh, we're trapped in the belly of this horrible machine and the machine is bleeding to death as well as uh, I look in my wallet, it's full of blood. Um, you know, the opening lines, the car's on fire, there's no driver at the wheel. I'll just show you guys. Yeah, this album's absolutely incredible. I got all three songs with hearts because this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Anyways, F.A. Infinity. The car is on fire, and there's no driver at the wheel, and the sewers are all muddied with a thousand lonely suicides. It went like this. Everything washed in a thin orange haze. Alright, I've made a moment. Alright. You know what? No, like seriously, this, this is one of my all-time favorite albums. I've had this at like a 99 for forever. No, literally, look at this shit. 99. This should be illegal. What the fuck even is this? Alright? Alright. If you couldn't tell, this this really does it for me. I mean, this this is brilliant. This is so fucking dark. It's so fucked up, dude. Oh my god. Like, it is one of the darkest listens ever. Anyways, this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most iconic openings of all time, okay? I didn't just steal your uh, comment, all right, or your opinion. And I feel like probably my lack of words spoke more than words that I could actually say. This thing is really dark. I like how desolate it feels. I like how defeated it sounds. I love when that uh, messed up riff turns into bells chiming in the distance. It makes it feel even more uh, despairing and empty. The violins just cut through like uh, like a knife through butter do this song um, and the whole thing just yeah it's a damn masterpiece so yep I Want Wind to Blow by the Microphones, in my opinion, an iconic song in the indie slash lo-fi genre it, that deserves every praise. The cozy feel of warmth, comfort, and calmness it expresses makes it so special. The Glow Part 2 is an amazing album, which I wholeheartedly adore. If you haven't heard it, you, uh, you definitely should. Glow Part 2 is absolutely incredible.
This album defines incredible. Okay, this this album defies incredible. This intro is absolutely incredible. Incredible, incredible, incredible. It is the most upbeat moment of this entire project and it sets the tone perfectly. <laughs> Oh, you're right. Oh, did he say the glo I thought he was talking Hawaii part two. That's right. Alone at the edge of a universe, solving a tune. That transitions into the next song. I think it also must be stated that that jump scare uh, transition also continues the momentum of this as it's really hard to turn it off after you're like, what the fuck just happened? Now, when I first heard this album, I didn't know what the fuck to make of this. I This was not my style at all. I didn't really care at all about folk. It took me like three listens to this to finally get accustomed to it and understand it and start to kind of connect with it. And now I've heard this album like 20 million times. I listen to this every time I go on an airplane. It is one of the softest, calmest uh, projects ever. It's depressing. It's sweet. It's just so close. I feel like this intro is just the perfect way to set this thing up. And I agree. I think this is also one of the best. As much as I would like to continue with this video, and there are so many more, I mean, the chat's just spamming x tall and just giving tons of examples, we will do a part two to this video at some point, um, but I will be ending it off with the holy grail of starting off an album, a song that is basically designed to get the ball rolling, and that is, of course, Wesley's Theory off to Pimp a Butterfly, which sets up the entire project perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Um, yeah, and it's also a great rap song. It's uh, it has an amazing amount of switch ups. The ideas are just endless on this track. This is oh my god, it's a stunning track. And I feel like this fits the perfect criteria of what I'm looking for in terms of an album opener. It really gets it started, as well as uh, transitioning wonderfully into the second track to continue your listening experience. <laughs> And then the video crashes, of course, corrupting the entire file. I thank you guys for your patience as there's a little bit of choppiness in this last second half. Uh, I did my best to try to fix it. Hopefully it wasn't too distracting. Regardless, to Pimp a Butterfly, uh, absolutely stunning, stunning opener here, Wesley's Theory. It tells the story of basically how the economic system was uh, made to, like, basically put down... Fuck, what am I trying to say? It's complicated, okay? It, it's pretty much saying that growing up black and uneducated uh, would result in uh, acquire... Fuck, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You, you get what I mean. It's Wesley's theory. Wesley Snipes, you know? It's it's that shit. I don't know. I'm, I'm terrible at explaining things. Throughout this entire video, I'm just stuttering like an idiot. Uh, so hopefully that wasn't too distracting either. Anyways, there's a new topic out by the time this video is out. I just want to thank everybody so much for everything. Thank you guys for the suggestions. Thank you for the incredible support. Uh, if you have any suggestions for videos, let me know. If you have any other album openers that I missed, let me know. Uh, if you want to see a part two, let me know. And that'll be all. All right. Peace out. Thanks everyone for watching. See you.